and uh, I make a left, he makes a left. I change lanes, he changes lanes, and I, and I go to Mel and I'm like, I think I'm being, I think the cops following me. I will have 5,000 Steam games I've never played by the time I retire. <laughs> I'll be good, I'll be set for life. And then, yeah, set stuff mom. like that and yeah. incest has just like <laughs> yeah. skyrocketed. That is true. And he goes, <laughs> <laughs> he said, bruh, like, <laughs> it was so funny. But yeah, power is a power is a dangerous drug. People get drunk off power, and then they start doing weird, crazy things. Like, I think I think we can all agree that Elon Musk has gone just off the rails. Yeah, I don't know what ha what happened to that guy. It's it's kind of hard to know if he's always been that way, or if like just because he's he owns Twitter now. It seems it seems like if you look at his history, he's just sort of failed upwards. Yeah. And, and just gotten, now he's gotten to the point where he's addicted to the smell of his own farts. Right, right. And is doing really stupid things. Yeah. Because of his ego. Yeah. And it's finally, it's finally opening people's eyes to like, oh, this isn't the genius disruptor, innovator, uh, you know, maverick, business savvy, uh, tech guru we thought uh, yeah. this is just just a man a guy with a guy with a lot of money and a lot of stupid ideas and doesn't right. know when to shut up yeah and it, it's it's so it's also kind of funny that uh you know because he owns x now that he'll just make these crazy claims or like share some article that just seems super sketchy and you never ever see any community notes on any of his posts it is you it know is what i mean very it's interesting like, i wonder if he's got that switch turned off Oh, he absolutely I mean, does. With a platform like X, the 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 basic functionality of it dictates that you have to have an enormous amount of granular control, right? Controllability over, um, you know, what's visible, what's not, what's, uh, you know, traceable to whom. Um, and just massive met it's all built to suck in metrics and, and information, right? Yeah. So obviously the analytics are really good. Right. And, you know, Musk was going to be like the champion of free speech. He was like, you know, Twitter's been, Twitter's been, uh, censored so much. It's been manipulated so much. I'm going to, he basically said, I'm going to come in and drain the swamp. Yeah. Just and did then, the opposite. And it's just swampier than ever. It really is. And it's just the, the whole like rules for thee, but not for me type uh, of thing. Yeah. It's uh, it's, it's totally become that with him. And that, I think that it's contributes rough. a little bit to uh, the whole, you know, kind of public realization that the, the, the this guy is not what I thought he was. Billionaires can't be trusted. Who would have thought? Yeah. Who would have thought? You know, billionaires are and and trillionaires are really crazy when you think about it. Like you have, it. What what, what was it? Nine hundred like, or ninety? Was it ninety people who own more wealth than the other ninety nine percent? Right. Yeah, the top one percent owns ninety nine percent of the wealth. Even top zero point one percent. Right. Yes. Yeah. Um, I've seen that statistic. And. That's, that's just, that's just, then you, then you look at, okay, the concept of, uh, trickle down economics, which is, you know, people who have a lot of money and power and wealth and influence will, they'll be, they'll be using, they'll be spending, but they don't, it doesn't really seem like it works that way because they're just obsessed with gaining more and more and more. Right. And what they do spend is, you know, on things like private jets or right. parties or whatever right. stuff that's not trickling down. Exactly. They're not. They're not going. They're not going to a grocery store and spending money. They're not going to a hardware store. They're not not going yeah. to yeah. a car wash. Right. You know, they're not. They're not spending their money in a community or or municipality. Yeah. Where their enormous resources can be just a fraction of them can be spread around right. and cause growth and, and prosperity. Exactly. exactly. And it's like, maybe some of them create jobs. Like, you know, there's obviously people who work at their companies. I guess that's a thing, whatever Tesla, but 
it's not like that's their intention. Like Elon Musk isn't doing this for the good of people so that he can create jobs. He's doing it. It's like it, you have to have a certain per- personality type to even become a billionaire. And that personality type is very f- bizarre to me because it's like they they somehow will never have enough. Like there's no ceiling that they could ever hit. They're, they're never like satisfied with just <laughs> having a million dollars or, or 20 million. Like they just have to keep going. And it's, I don't, I don't know if it, if like really it's a net positive for society. It's, it is kind of a strange phenomenon because I think, I think a lot of the people that you and I know who would consider themselves normal, if they had $50 million, they would be like, oh, wow, my life has changed massively. Now I can start living my life and instead of, you know, having having a few days here and there to to do the things that I need to do. Right. And maybe get a vacation every now and then. Yeah. Now I can start living full time. I can do whatever I want to yeah. do. You're just going to enjoy life. You're just going to go paint, right. spend time with your family. Exactly. Hang out with your friends. Just just be a, like, I'm just a hangout guy. Like I would just be hanging out but if every you, day. <laughs> if you woke up with a hundred million dollars in assets tomorrow, would you suddenly go, whoa, I need to, I need to grow this to 500 million. Exactly. Right. Yeah. That's a like crazy that, thought. I, I need crazy I need, thought. And now I have the resources. Right. Now I can finally have even more money. Like, Oh, how like, do I expand my empire? And, and you know what I mean? Like the empire of me, of my life. Like how do I, how do I just become a, a larger sphere of influence, you know, to, to the world? I think, it's I think there are a few thought. notable exceptions. I think there are a few, uh, folks out there who have been very wealthy and have have intentionally and methodically taken their wealth and put it to use for positive change. Of they've, course. They've, they've opened up foundations. They've donated to charities or started charities. Yeah. They've, they've taken almost all of, some, in some cases, almost all of their net worth and made it go to you know, to purposes that do all kinds of good stuff for a lot of people. Sure. Um, and I think that's the most, um, I look at that as extremely admirable. It is, but it's, uh, it's also very rare. I think that's why it's it admirable. Is, it is very rare. It's very rare. I mean, and, and it's, what's more common is like people with a lot of money. It seems to me that they do like spend, spend it on charity. Do they do, they do like, you know, uh, like fundraising and, and, and all these like yeah. gala events or whatever, donating charitable things. But then it's like, there's also like, that's almost like, I think most people with that much money, that's almost kind of like a facade. It's just like, they're sort of just rubbing elbows oh. with, and they're networking with other yeah. people in their sphere to, to just get more money, more power and all this shit. And it, uh, and then there's also this sense of entitlement uh, like, and they're all egomaniacs. Most of them are egomaniacs. And then I think there's a part of a lot of them that go, well, look at all this, all this good I'm doing. It, I, I, I kind of deserve to fuck around here on the side. You know, I can, I can pull some strings behind the scenes. Maybe I can do a little money laundering. Maybe do a little diddling. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's just like they, they have this sense of, well, you know, I'm doing all this good stuff. So, you know, I, I can have some fun. I've, I've earned it. I think yeah. that's, that's more so that like the common mentality of those types. And, and that's not, it's not completely invalid. Yeah. Um, well, it just depends on to what level, like what that's, degree that's, of, that's true. of that's, shadiness they get up to. Um, let's see. I, there was there was a particular quote. Um, that From, I was I was looking for. I think it was attributed to Carnegie. Carnegie. Uh, Carnegie Mellon. No. Uh, Carnegie Hall. Uh, yeah, that. Okay. Uh, a- Andrew Carnegie. Um, I I didn't find it immediately, but it, but but it basically it boiled down to once you have stupid soup, you know, super t- stacks of money. If you don't start giving to charity, then it becomes really apparent that you're just hoarding it. You're just yeah. You're just you just love wealth. Yeah, and. So yeah, it's just a save the, face. This yeah, the simplest the simplest solution is to, you know, regularly donate to charity, because otherwise, 
it's clear that you're just a, a greedy Scrooge McDuck. Right, exactly. And oftentimes they're donating to organizations that will help them in some way. They have a vested interest in in who they're, they're not just giving it out to kids with cancer and expecting they're, nothing in return. Often they're just converting it into uh, a tax break, you know, political power. Exactly. Yeah. Right. Um, and, and it's yeah. just a game. It's just a, it's just a game, you know? And I think when you're at that level, you, you're kind of, it seems almost impossible to be at that level and not play the game. Yeah. You know what I mean? You ever watch uh, Succession? No, I haven't seen it. It's it's a, it's a good show. Okay. Um, and it's all about people people who their life is one of you know extreme extreme power and wealth, but also constant po- political maneuvering, um, and you know strategy and backstabbing right. and it's 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 very it's very good i mean um, it's like modern day game of thrones just a lot of vying for political power and just in a, in a lot conquest. of ways i th- yeah i think you can definitely draw some parallels there yeah um and it's got some great uh it's got some great acting the cast is outstanding the the the, the score is really good and notably the camera work is is actually uh not it's atypical the camera work is is and cinematography is is unique in that um it doesn't so much follow the typical you know, blocking mm-hmm. and um, it's a little bit more organic in that you might have, you know, you might have two key characters in a scene, right? And they're, they're discussing what's going on. They're having a, a you know, serious talk. Yeah. Things are happening, but the camera might just, you know, have them sort of, not even in focus and they're actually focusing on some ancillary character who's getting breakfast at the buffet mm. in the background. That's kind of cool. Um, and, and the way that, and after, after, you know, rewatching it a couple of times, I realized that the way that the camera views it is very, uh, to me, it was a lot more immersive because it's almost mm. like you are, your, your viewpoint is, is it's almost like you're eavesdropping. It's, it's almost like yeah. you're eavesdropping on someone's conversation. Partially that, and partially, it's possible to, you know, have somebody do something important and not even see it because you were right. distracted by something else. Exactly right. Or vice versa. Yeah. So um, you, you re- it really kind of gives you that fly on the wall perspective in a way. It it does. It's it's. I really I I didn't even notice it until That's I got into a YouTube rabbit hole about the show, and yeah. then that was one of the things that they covered, and I was like. I'm not a very insightful person when it comes to cinema in general. Mm -hmm. Um, But it was like, for me, once I, once I heard it, I was like, Oh yeah, no, that's actually really cool. I I appreciate that. That is really cool. I mean, yeah, it's it's insane how, how much you can shape the, the storytelling of, of a, of a film or a TV series just through the cinematography and editing. Yeah. You know what I mean? I mean, editors are really the ones telling the story. You know, and, mm-hmm. how, and exactly how they want you to to perceive a, a scene. Um, have you seen? Uh, we, Mel, I just watched Old Boy. Have you seen Old Boy? It's a Korean flick. No, it's the famous guy. He did Parasite and a uh, bunch you of others. Did see Parasite? Parasite Thank you for was that. so good. Yes. Okay. Oh, that was off of my rack. Nice. Uh, watch Old Boy. Make sure that you're in a good mental state before you watch it. <laughs> no spoilers, but um, yeah. I wish you had seen it because I would I would just go go ham on, on that movie right now. But it's it's a good one. It's a good one. Okay. Um, I'll just leave it at that. Uh, since we last spoke, have you cracked open that Kindle? No, I've not. I've not cracked <laughs> open the Kindle. It, I, I'm not going to make any excuses. I, I it's it's the I, same. I, it's your, the same thing. Your excuse is just reality, which is that you you get busy and uh, you're like. Uh, yeah, I'm in the bathroom right now, but that thing's 
into a, it's, yeah. it's another room. I don't want to go over there. Yeah, no. I, I have been especially busy this month for uh, reasons I can't share on camera. But Ooh, I, but, exclusive. But something, I, I showed it to you just earlier before we started yes. shooting. So uh, you, you probably have an idea. There are reasons. There are reasons, but... Um, what can I share? What can I actually say on camera that won't get me in legal trouble? Uh, ironically, I got pulled over by a cop this weekend. Yeah? Yeah, it's been a while. It's been a while. Um, it's a fix-it ticket. He pulled me Exhaust? over. No, it was uh, my Ten? registration. Your registration? My registration. I, I didn't even realize. I already paid. I'm pretty sure I paid for my registration in the mail. Or no, online. And then uh, I think they sent me some some update saying that, like, I think I need either a smog check or there was something off that I I missed. I either missed, I didn't get it in the mail or I didn't get the, the email or whatever. And so I've just been spaced out and completely forgot about, I forgot the fact that my registration's out of date. And so we were on our way, Mel and I are on our way to uh, Ballast Point uh, Brewery mm -hmm. in Long Beach. So I actually kind of, you know, whatever. So we were right there. We were three minutes away from the brewery and I see a cop tailing me no lights mm -hmm. and i'm just i'm like hmm, it's like an suv cop and uh i make a left he makes a left i change lanes he changes lanes and i, and I go to mel and i'm like i think i'm being i think the cop's following me i think i'm gonna get pulled over and she's like what and she starts freaking out she's like no and i'm like yeah, yeah watch this and I, I make a left turn at a stop sign he makes a left. i'm like i'm definitely getting pulled over for something but i was like was i speeding she's like no you weren't speeding so we actually he's fought, tailing me for a while all the way to the brewery i finally get into the parking lot and then he bloop turns on his lights and i'm like here we go so i just park i'm just in the parking lot and uh he he walks up and he's like can you turn, turn your car off and i was like oh yeah turn my car off he's like I pulled you over because your your registration's out of date. I'm like, oh shit! <laughs> I think I literally said, oh shit, <laughs> like right in front of the cop. And he was uh, he was a young guy. He looked like maybe our age. He looked like we're not we're not young anymore. We're not young anymore. It's so <laughs> weird seeing cops your age. It's he might have even been a couple of years younger than us, honestly. Yeah. Just like this tall, like skinny, like good looking guy. You know, uh, five o'clock shadow, just chill looking guy, but you know, serious cop demeanor. And but he was a young guy, and uh, and I was like, oh my god, I. Uh, you're right. I, I, I've been putting that on the back burner. It totally slipped my mind to, to take care of that. And then he starts, uh, he goes, you don't have any modifications to this car? <laughs> 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 I'm like, uh -oh. yeah. I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's like, what have you done? And I just start listing off things. I'm like, uh, intercooler, turbo inlet. Um, uh, and like, I'm getting a little nervous at this point because it's like, he's starting to like add on things to the list. And he's like, you have an intake? And I'm like, yeah, I have a cold air intake. And he's like, pop the hood, let me see it. And I'm glad that he's, he said that right then and there because I was going to continue going on with the mods, including <laughs> the fact that my car is straight piped and doesn't have a catalytic converter. Yeah. And it's one nice thing about my car being low as it is, is that it's hard to look under to just do a visual right. inspection. Right. So he was like, pop your hood. I was so nervous, I forgot how to pop my hood. I couldn't find the, <laughs> I couldn't find the damn thing. To, I was like, he's like, how long you have this? He was like, just giving me shit. He's like, how long you have this car? I was like, five years. He's like, all right. <laughs> it's like not going well. Um, and also, he's like, license reg. I give my license, but like, my registration, I don't have it. So I'm like trying to find it. I'm like stalling on my phone. Like, let me see if it's on the DMV site. Because I actually had forgotten what the status of it was. So anyway, I popped the, the hood. He's like, step outside and lift it for me. I lift it up. He goes, that's an aggressive intake. And I'm like, is it? <laughs> I'm like, is it real? <laughs> and I'm like looking at it. I'm like, it is a pretty aggressive intake. It's just got this fat pipe on it, the huge, huge filter. And he's like, where are your carb stickers? And I was like, this is something I didn't realize, that you need carb stickers on modified uh, parts. What are carb stickers? Uh, it's like it's just to verify that it's within California car, uh, carbon spec. Oh, uh, okay. Or okay. whatever. So you're supposed to request it or get it from the manufacturer of the modified part. And I, I had no idea. I, this is something I had learned that day. And I was like, I didn't even realize. I didn't know that I, I needed stickers. Uh, you know, I, he's like, did you install these yourself? I was like, no, everything was installed by my, my, mechan my mechanic. And... I should have dropped right there. Not that it mattered, but I, I totally blanked. I should have dropped the fact that my my mechanic is a LAPD cop. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't know if that would have helped any. I feel like I feel like it's better that you didn't. Probably, yeah, exactly. It would have been maybe a little too too desperate, a little too keen. Uh, but 
you know, he was like, all right, close the hood. And, um, you know, I'm like, sorry, I'll, I'll try to keep finding my registration, on my phone. I get back in the car. He's like, I'm going to go write some stuff up. I'll, I'll be right back. Just keep working on that registration. I'm sweating bullets because he even said he was like, you know, I could have you towed right now because your, your registration is out of date. And I was like, oh, he's like, where do you live? And I, I told him and he's like, you came all the way out here just for ballast point because, you know, I'm like an hour away. Yeah. And I was like, yeah, you know, I'm, I'm kind of from around here. You know, my, my, my folks are around here. It's, it's kind of old stomping grounds. He's like, OK, sit tight. I'll try to get you out of here as quick as possible. And I'm like thinking, am I getting towed right now and have to go all the way back home? And then he's gone for like five minutes and it just feels like eternity. And I can't well, I, I can't find my registration anywhere on, on my phone. And I'm like, crap, if I can't find this, is, it, is he definitely going to tow me? Is he going to do more inspections on the car and then whatever? So he comes back. But he can look up the current status of your registration. He could. He could if he wanted to. So he, he comes back and he just goes, I'm just going to give you a fix-it ticket. Uh, I'm not going to tow you because you live an hour from home and that would suck. So he was actually really cool about it. He he was as cool as he, as he could be. And he was just like, just you have 13 days to take care of this. Just, you know, bring this. Once you have your registration sticker, bring it, uh, bring this, this ticket into the, you know, whatever police station. They'll, they'll wipe it. Mm -hmm. Like it never happened. I was like, thank you so much. I was like, thank you. Thank you so much. Cause he could have, he could have easily, if he was just having a bad day or just wanted to be a dick, he could have towed me like that. Yeah. And then it would have ruined our whole day. You know, it was a whole hour drive home. Um, it would have been costly. So yeah. Note to everybody out there, make sure your registration's up to date. Don't, uh, do as I say, not as I do. Yes. Do as I do, because I learned a long time ago. Yeah that I really like to pro procrastinate for some reason when it comes yeah. to renewing my registration. Mm -hmm. For years, I would get a registration renewal notice right. and I would just let it age. Yeah. Like a, like a stinky cheese on my desk. Yeah, it doesn't really age like a fine wine, does no. it? No, and so I would let it get to like the third level of like financial penalty for being late. Yeah, right. And then I would pay it. <laughs> and at some point, I was like, why the hell am I doing this? Right. And so from then on, I get, I get it in the mail and I immediately, I just like the, I open it. And the first thing that I do as soon as I can is I just handle it. Yeah. And I've never had this problem. I've always been completely on time. I do it as fast as possible. This was just an anomaly because I needed some extra work done. I think it's either a smog check or, or some paperwork was missing and it, and it slipped through the cracks. Yeah. I've, I've, I've always been on top of it. I've never had late registration. So I was just like, Oh God. But, um, but yeah, like, so cops th are, that was, that cops was actually cool. a pretty, pretty decent outcome. Definitely. Definitely. Yeah. And, and I got lucky. Yeah. Like God bless. Cause you're right. He could have really, that, that's the scary thing about cops is they have, they have so much power and so little accountability. Sure. They, they could, you know, they could just find a way to ruin your day, ruin your week or month or life. Yeah, right. And, you know, a lot like you break, you break the law every day. You don't even know you're breaking the law. Exactly. Yeah. But, but you do. And cops right. know that and they know they can drill down and find something. Yeah. If they really want to. So. Right. It's, it's funny because there's a lot of, there, there are some people who are very hostile, right. like very, very, you know, just like, I'm not going to cooperate, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that's, that's. That's a legitimate, you know, tactic, which is to make it clear to the cop that you are prepared to, you know, defend your defend your rights. Right. But the the danger of that is if you are not if you have not studied the legality of your particular potential situation right. thoroughly, yeah. Then you're just gonna make it worse for yourself. Because once they realize once they realize you don't have the actual legal understanding of what's going on you exactly. just know you you just know that they're stepping on your rights and sure. you're pissed about it you have no power then they have, then they can the just balls in their court yeah they can the ball's 100 percent in their court absolutely and it's like it's crazy like even if you do know your shit sometimes the cop like i've seen videos whatever footage where the cops don't really know their shit and they don't really realize that they just assume that the person's just talking out of their ass when they yeah. actually do know their shit and the cops will just like you know they they, they act first and ask yeah. questions later and it yeah. still works out horribly for, I mean, eventually if justice is served, then the cops get 
fucked and and the person well, gets some sort of the person of, gets a settlement gets a settlement that, that doesn't get that doesn't that doesn't punish the cops at all it just comes from right. the the taxpayers exactly yeah and the cops get you know a slap on the wrist yeah maybe you get a settlement but like at, at what cost just getting slammed to the ground and cuffed and just having that you know be a, yeah. a memory that you have to just live with now that yeah. sucks that so, sucks too so yeah it, it worked out really good for me um it's, because it's, because it you were straight. not a dick, you were just like yeah. He could I know, tell. I, I know you have a, you have a job to do. Extremely compliant. I'm not gonna try to, I'm not gonna try to you know screw with you. I'm just we're we're both just trying to handle this. Yeah, probably helped that I had Mel in the car with me. You know, if you just like if you had like this like nice wholesome Asian girl in she your does, car, she does give you she, she does gives, give you that wholesome support. Hundred percent. If it was just me in the car, mm-hmm. I think maybe the vibes would have been a little different. Yeah. It's like who's a single guy, you know? Yeah. Clearly, a, a woman would never touch this fool. <laughs> it's like, all right, she's with him. He he must be all right. She you brings know? you. She brings you some respectability. A, a little bit of respectability, a little bit of credibility. Um. So thank you, thank you, sweetheart. Um. But so that was a fun way to kick off the day. I was really alert and focused after that. <laughs> um. Definitely, definitely needed a drink. But what other bro updates were there? Not not much else to report this weekend. Uh, apparently, apparently bro is offensive is, is no, <laughs> I, you were gonna, oh. I wouldn't have been surprised. I'm like, all right, we can't, that scratch that. That's another one off the bingo chart. There's a, there is an upsurgence of bruh, bruh. Yeah. Yeah. It has been, it has been surging in yeah. popularity. Yeah. Yeah. I, uh, I, I dropped the bruh the other day in the, uh, the grocery the grocery store with with no i think she like she stopped at the clearance section as she does just mm-hmm. look through the deals and just i was like she's probably gonna put, pull out you know a pop tart or something she pulls out like a giant loaf of bread and i'm just like i just said bruh and, and, then, and then right when i did this like big sassy black guy on like a electric wheelchair just like started laughing his ass off and he goes <laughs> he said bruh like he, it was so funny and i was like you feel me you fucking feel me he just like started shaking his head, was just like laughing. He said, "Bruh, <laughs> it was so funny." Yeah, yeah, it is. Uh, it is. It is a very versatile expression. Yeah, right. I like it. I'm and, for it. Uh, yeah, it's it's just it's just popping off in the lexicon these days. Yeah, man. I think uh, I think that one might be here to stay. I'm glad that some of the other ones have been dying out. I'm not so hot about the other other terms. No cap. I haven't heard that one in a while. I'm glad that's being put to rest. Yeah. Chuggy. You know Chuggy? No, I don't. That was a one I, that... I'd uh, prefer not to. I don't even remember what it... It sounds annoying as hell. It is. It's a, it's a slang term used to describe something or someone that is out of date, basic, or trying too hard to be trendy. Yeah. Well, that's like contradictory. Because it is a trendy... <laughs> exactly. <laughs> it doesn't make any sense. It's so, a total t- contradiction. Oh so, yeah. Fuck that That's term. so true. Yeah. But uh, but anyway, anything else? What what'd you get up to? Any 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 fun news to report? Any any bra or bro updates? Um, I think that should be a, a, a weekly segment that we do bro updates, and then there should be a bra updates to follow it. I I have a pretty uh pretty unexciting life lately, um, and and that honestly that's not always a bad thing. Definitely not. Uh, I. I will say really quick, I, I did catch one of those guys in like a full on like leaf ghillie suit type thing mm-hmm. in Pasadena. Interesting. When we were just like kind of hopping around, it was after dinner and like people were starting to go out to the bars and stuff. Mm-hmm. And there was just a guy in full in a full leaf suit, head to toe, couldn't see any part of his body. And he was just doing like pranks. He oh, was, was he like pretending to be pretending a bush? to be a bush and then just scaring probably just like chicks walking oh, that's by. That's always good. It was great. It was actually really cool. I didn't actually get to see him scare anyone because uh, he was like he was like setting up. It was kind of funny because was like, he was like just setting things up. Just, it was it's funny seeing a guy in a full leaf suit trying to be organized and responsible, like doing a job. You know, it's like this is my civic duty. Yeah. <laughs> right before you got here, there was a just a chopper that, that was just landed in the park near here. In the park? Yeah, like landed in the park and then took off a few minutes later. It's like when Mel was going home, we, we went, I was like, why is there a chopper at 1 a.m.? And uh, and then I, I drove to the office because I had to pick up the recorder right after she, Mel left. And I drove down the street passing the park. And there was like a, 
an ambulance or a fire truck, a fire truck and something else. Well, it must have been a medevac. I think it was. I think I, that's the only thing I could think of. But it's wild. Just why a chopper to get? Uh, I don't think there's. Is good. there a? Is there a like trauma? You know facility around here i mean there's there's like urgent care and er's you know Hmm. in in the city in the main city but it was just it was just weird seeing a chopper at 1 a.m over my house kind of bizarre that is unusual yeah but hopefully everyone's okay usually it's just owls and probably some bats out there i've never i don't think i've ever heard them but i'm sure there's some out around bats i've never seen a bat out here no no there's a lot. There's a lot of bats out where my parents live. Oh yeah, um, I can see that. I guess that would be notable. I get to hang out with my parents this this uh, last weekend. That was really nice. That is nice. That is cool. Don't get to see them that often, so it was it was very uh, it was very refreshing. Was your sister out here too with them or no? Uh, no. Nah. Oh, okay. No, nah, she's she's holding down the fort. Gotcha. Nice. How are your parents doing? They're all right. They're good. My dad's uh, retired. And that's cool. His doctor told him to stop drinking eight cups of coffee a day. Literally eight. Uh, he drinks that much. Like, like these guys. Yeah. What? That's nuts. Well, I would say probably three or four of these full, Damn. but it's like when you brew, when you brew a single cup, but it like you brew yeah. two espresso shots right. and then a coffee and it fills the cup. Oh my gosh. That's wild. Why do you even need that much caffeine if you're retired? Well, he's just used to he's it. He's just used to it, I guess. Yeah, it's got to be such a... I feel like that's not talked about much. Like, transitioning into retirement has to be mm-hmm. hard, you know? Yeah, he's... I know people's parents that, like, refuse to retire. Like, they just want to keep working because they just don't know... They wouldn't know what to do with themselves. It's like, yeah. which makes sense. You've been doing it for 45, 50 years or whatever. It's all you know, you know? It's... Well, I, I'm, I'm really happy for him because... Definitely. You That's know, huge. I, I think I think that he had the right mentality of I've been working hard, you know, for a long time. Yeah. And now I'm in a position where I can I can stop having to work and start living, you know, living my my life on my terms yeah. and relaxing and enjoying my time. And spending more time with people that I care about. Yeah. Spending more time on things that I care about and not having to wake up every morning and go, okay, what's on the docket for today? What, right. You know, what meetings do I have? Right. What emails do I have to respond to? Yeah. That's a, that's the ideal approach, I think, to yeah. it. You like know what he, I mean? He did it for, for, you know, himself mm-hmm. and, and, you know, his family. It, it was, it was not just like my time has come. It's time to retire. And it wasn't, oh, well, if I don't, if I, you know, I can't retire because I don't know what I'll do if I'm not working anymore, which I'm glad that 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 wasn't the problem. Yeah. It's like there's an infinite amount of things to do when you're not like if it's outside of work, you know what I mean? And just like you have people, like you said, people in your life that you can spend more time with, you know, he he was able to just fly out here and and spend the weekend with you, which is awesome. I think, uh, you know, it's like all those like old hobbies that. You know, you never really got around to, you yes. know, following through with or, you know, just a new skill or a new, a new anything that you want mm-hmm. to take up. It's like, that's, that's your opportunity. Um, traveling, obviously, here and there. Not, not as much because he had to travel a lot for work. Oh, okay. And yeah, so that's... back in the day and he just got, he got to the point where he just over it. really doesn't like traveling that much. That's totally fair. Yeah. Um, the, tra- the traveling, the transition part, not the being somewhere Experience. else. Yeah, I, I get that. Um so but but you know, still still can travel. And then, you know, when when you've already hung out with everyone in your life and spent time with people, then you can play video games. Mhm. Sometimes I think about that. Like when I retire, like all the video games that I never got to play, that I never got to beat or finish or n- even yeah. didn't get to start, like just so many legendary titles that, you know, have have just They'll be waiting fl- for flown you. under my radar. Maybe even remastered at that point. Exactly right, or have like multiple, like more sequels. You know, just play through them. Mm-hmm. That'd be cool. That would be cool. And I, I think when's that going to happen? Is that going to be our generation? Are we going to be the first generation to play video games in retirement? Because I don't really see it with 
I like mean, you parents. could you could retire and just like start woodworking and building birdhouses. That but, too. I mean, yeah, do it all. But yeah, I mean, you woodworking you simulator. Have decades backlog of cool video games that you want to play. Yeah. I think that will be a thing. I will have five thousand Steam games I've never played by the time I retire. <laughs> I'll be good. I'll be set for life. My retirement plan for Steam games is already on track. Blow past my quota. That will be good, man. Yeah. You'll finally play Control. I know. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe finally read a book. <laughs> That'd be nice. I mean, to be fair, there's nothing really stopping you from reading a book when you're sitting at the DMV waiting for an appointment. That is true. I have a phone. There's really no excuse to. I could just whip it out. My phone, not not my wiener. But uh, I did have some uh, some updates, or not updates, debates. I was like, we haven't done some debates in a while, and I, I pulled some from Reddit. These okay. are bar debates. Actually, there's some that are not safe for work. These are like the really kind of lewd, lewd scenarios that uh, that will warm up to. I have some right, warm up well, topics I just, first. I just watched. So, Dead. mom, if you're watching, parents don't don't watch this part. Skip. Probably just skip the rest of this episode. And wa- don't watch Deadpool and Wolverine. It'll it'll. <laughs> Did you watch? Not it? be a good use of your time. Did yes. you see it? Oh, really? How was it? Really quick. How was that? Uh, I enjoyed it. It really? was not what I was expecting at all. Um, really, but it made it made sense pretty quick what they were doing and how they were doing ah. it. Um, they promoted the crap out of it. Yeah, they. I mean, it's they good, just good it's ad, everywhere. Head campaign. Yeah, um, but it was it was fun. Nice. Yeah, I'll have to check that out. Yeah. I thought about going this weekend, but I was like, eh. "How was? How you saw it in the theater, right?" No. Oh, you didn't. Oh, okay. Well, somebody saw it in a theater. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you did it the smart way then. Yeah. If it's opening weekend, I don't like going to any kind of, any sort of big blockbuster movie because it's just, the, it's a, it's chaos. Yeah. There's definitely going to be people and they're talking or kids just ruining the thing. Yeah. I think since, since 2020, since pandemic, I've grown, like my tolerance for that shit is shot. You've also aged a couple years. Maybe that too. I'm just there is a certain there is a certain point where you just start to go. Uh, yeah, yeah. We're just. Geezed. I have I have a nice I have a nice TV at home. I have a good sound system. True. I can True. make my own popcorn. Yeah. The older you get, the, the more you're just like, why would I ever leave? Why would I ever leave my comfortable house? But then, but yeah, we're 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 not at that point yet. Uh, it's still nice to go out. It's every nice every now out. and then, yeah. Yeah, see a little bit of sun, although it's been way too hot. Anyway. Debates. Warm-up debates. What's that? Yeah. Okay. So eating finger foods with a fork, is it acceptable or not? So let's say like pizza, for example. Uh, Depends on the setting. Ooh. So if if it's like a nice Italian restaurant. Yeah. Right? Man. I don't know. There's something... I was was at a a nice, like, legit... Uh, very very authentic Italian restaurant. Yeah, and I got a pizza. Yeah, I did attempt to use a fork and a knife. Okay, and I was like, no, that's that's. It feels wrong. I feel like pizza was made to be eaten with your hands. Definitely, and it, like the only exception that I would personally give it is if the pizza is made in such a way, it's like a design flaw with the pizza where it cannot be properly eaten with your hands. If that's the case, which it should never be the like, case, it's, it's got so much it's, crap on it that stuff's exactly, falling off. Exactly, you can't reasonably eat it. If it's it's just if it, you can't take it's a, a slice, failed pizza. If you can't take a slice of pizza and give it a little taco fold, right, with one hand, and and eat it, right, then then that's I I don't think that pizza is worth eating. It may that's probably not a pizza. I think that doesn't it doesn't qualify. So I think if that's the case, then okay, then you have no other choice. Use a fork and knife. Otherwise, it looks it looks it just feels wrong. It looks weird. It, it makes me a little upset when I see it. All right. So, other than pizza, what are some examples of finger like, foods? What about like ribs? Like seeing seeing someone like instead of like just picking up the ribs and getting your hands dirty, like if yeah. you actually started just cutting the meat off the bone. All right. So if it was if it was that's, a that's wild a, a rack of lamb. Uh huh. You know that's ribs. But well, that's, that's different. It is different. Yeah. So I would eat that with a with a fork and knife. Right. You wouldn't call that a finger food until until the point where I'm like. In the last, <laughs> yeah, right. Pieces yeah. of meat off the bone. Yeah, yes. Um, then it's fine. But but uh, so are you? Are you saying like, if I saw somebody get a big, a big juicy rack of ribs and then just start 
eating it with a fork and knife, uh, I would, I would, you know, feel judgmental towards them. I, I think I would, I would be like, why, why get the ribs? Okay. Well, I will you know? say it's part of the experience. I think with ribs, my experience has been that you do want to very often use a fork and knife to cut them apart. Yes. If they're yeah, not already to, yeah. to what I what I like to do is, is just separate the meat from the bone yeah. on the side of each rib. Sure. So then they're all separated and each rib has one nice side of yeah. meat. That's, attached that's to. normal, but you got to prepare it for fingering Yes. or hand handheld action. Right. We'll mm-hmm. go with that term. Uh, that's, that's normal. But once you've, once you've separated the ribs, yes, to continue using a fork and knife is crazy. Unless you're, at, it doesn't even work that well. Yeah, it's 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 difficult. It's right. difficult. If you're at a, a, you know, a restaurant where you gotta wear a, it's like black tie. Yeah, 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 yeah. Then, if somebody served you that something that can't be eaten politely with a fork and knife, then right. That's that's. Like that's a, boiling, a problem, that's a problem a with the crab. restaurant. True. Like, like they shouldn't have that on the menu. Right. Yeah. Or they should just provide you with a, which I've actually gotten before. I forget where it was, but I got some ribs and they literally bought, brought me like a little plastic bib. Uh huh. That's like you tie it. It's like you tie it around the back of your neck. You know, oh yeah. Like a, and, a and boiling the, crab type uh, of thing. Yeah. Something like that. Right. Yeah. I appreciated the foresight on that. Yeah. Um, that but is yeah, nice. That's thoughtful. I don't want to try to eat, you know, baby back or, or beef ribs with a fork and knife. No, you can't do that. That's crazy. Bottom. All right. We, we agree on that topic. Yeah. What about, uh, oh, this is one that Mel and I, we don't debate it, but we have, we're different in how we approach this. Mm-hmm. Do you wet your toothbrush before or after you apply toothpaste? Um, I'm agnostic. I typically would say after. Okay. Um, but that's just, you know, there's no particular order of operations that I consider to be correct. Right. Um, no. it is really just a preference thing, I think. No, I think, I think I, I would say, say put the toothpaste on, then wet the toothbrush. Yeah. Okay. Because the dry bristles do a better job of grabbing onto the glob of toothpaste. Right. Yeah. That's, that's fair. That's, uh, how I do it. Mel is a toothbrush wet first and then toothpaste after. Okay. If it works, it works. I think it works. Yeah. I, I think if you do I'm it not, after, then mm-hmm. you, you t- it typically gets a little wetter, you know? Because, I mean, you're you're obviously wetting more. You're not just wetting the bristles. Yeah. Generally, if I wet the toothbrush first, then I, 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 I find the toothpaste to be a little dry for my liking. It doesn't, it doesn't break down quite as quickly in my mouth mm. as it does when I wet it when I wet the toothpaste itself as well. Okay. So just a, a small, a small, I'm sure, I'm sure there's some preference. folks out there who might have like a little, take a little shot of water and have that in their mouth before I can they see start that. brushing. I could see that. Yeah. I uh, will say, uh, I hate toothpaste. That's super foamy. Oh yeah. Yeah. Or it's like you just drank, you just ate some cyanide or something. You're just yeah, foaming at the mouth. And, and, and crazy story about that after. Uh, okay. I'm interested. Yeah. Um, the main, the main thing being, uh, that it encourages you to be like, Oh, I have a mouthful of foam. I must be done brushing and you spit it out. Mm, right. Um, but also that, that f- the, one of the main things that causes all that foaming is something called sodium lauryl sulfate, mm-hmm. which is a surfactant. It's when, you know, a surfactant is one of those things that typically is good at making bubbles. Okay. Um, and it can be really irritating to your mouth. So I remember I had been using a natural like hippy dippy toothpaste for a while. Yeah. And then I switched to, you know, whatever crest stuff. Uh, cause I was traveling and I had to just use whatever. Yeah. And I was like, Oh, this is really minty. And then I was like, no, this is burning my mouth. Mm. And I was, I was like, Oh um, yeah, no, this is, this has sodium lauryl sulfate in it and right. it is irritating my, my buccal membranes. Yeah in my mouth and that's not pleasant. I don't like it. Yeah. That's terrible. Um, what's so, the, what's the, the actual benefit? Is it just a psychological thing? Like you just f- it's supposed to make you feel like it's cleaning it better. Uh, it's, when it's foamy. It's, yeah. Aesthetic slash psychological right. because toothpaste, 
or tooth gel does not have to foam to be effective. Right, right. At all. So it really is just kind of like mind tricks. It's like when you have like a like a, a really soapy, sudsy dish soap versus mm-hmm. one that doesn't have any bubbles at all. Right. One just feels, the bubbles feel a little cleaner. Right. You know, like, oh, it's actually activating or something. Well, with dish soap, generally, I, I do look for the presence of bubbles as a benefit because True. that means there's there's a fairly powerful surfactant in there which is what you want when you're going after gunk on your dishes yeah true not not so much in your mouth brushing your teeth is more about the mechanical action yeah than it is about like oh there's something soapy and it's helping to loosen up the gunk Mm -hmm. right um if you're you know gonna get into how do you how do you rinse your mouth after you brush your teeth oh the faucet just like do you use your hand and cup it no, I always, I, I'm a dyed in the wool, like straight from the faucet. Drink. Okay. You just kind of tilt the head. Yeah. Nice. I, uh, I, I do this thing where I get the water from my toothbrush, like from the bristles. So like, put so kind of like your cats, like dipping their, their paw in the water. And exactly. Then their paw. So like, I'll like run, run it, run the brush under the faucet. And then once it's filled with water, I'll suck it out. And then okay. I'll, I'll do that. Like three or four times until I have enough water in, in my mouth to swish it. I don't know why. I don't know why. You know what it is? It's I, I've always, I don't know if I've talked about this before here, but I've, I've always had this thing for as long as I can remember where I have a thing with like getting my hands wet or dirty. You're like a rat, you reverse raccoon. Is that they like that? Cause they love getting their hands dirty. They like, they, they, it's a whole thing. They, they, they like the to take their, and... their food and put it in water. Uh huh. Um, and there's some theories as to why, but you huh? Know. Yeah, no, I, I don't. I, I like keeping my hands completely dry, mm. and when I can avoid, it's not like I freak out if it gets wet or something. But like the other day, I was, you know, the skirt steak. Yeah. Um, Mel and I were making it, and I, I took it out, and instead of just like holding it down with one hand and, and cutting it into strips, mm-hmm. I took tongs, and I like was holding it down with the tongs and then cutting it, and it was, it just was not as efficient. When it was raw. When it was raw. Yeah. And it it was working, but it just, and then Mel was that's, like, that's what like the carving forks are for. Right. Yeah. But it's like, why didn't I just use my hand? It's like, because I just didn't want it, well, even though it's like, I was going to wash my hands anyway. Also that, but it's a good way to keep yourself from chopping finger, you know, finger pieces off. Yeah. That's you have a history of doing that. There's yeah. Yep. I've, I've slipped once or twice. <laughs> had some accidentes in the kitchen, but no, I mean, then, and then Mel was like, Oh, like I'll just do it. And then she started doing it with her hand. I'm like, that is way better. Like she was doing it way more, like way faster. And I was like, yeah, it's, it's just a weird thing I've always had with my hands. I don't know why. I don't know if I like got got it stuck in some goop or something when do I you, like accidentally pissed on my hand when I was a kid. It just traumatized me. Do you have gloves? I uh, like I do have. Mm, uh, there might be some gloves under the, the kitchen. Um, okay. Some rubber gloves, latex or whatever. Um, rubber. Rubber. Uh, not like not like yellow. Not yellow like the cleaning gloves. Kitchen gloves. I'm oh. talking. So, okay. I have nitrile gloves. Yeah. But I keep those there at the office. Okay. So my suggestion to you is the next time you have a situation like that, mm-hmm. grab grab some gloves. Yeah. And use those like if you're doing food prep, it's right. super helpful because That's true. And I, I had a I had a phase when like for some reason I had um uh you know my 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 flashlight, my knife, etc., the stuff I carry daily. I had added like a little pair of, of nitrile gloves. Mm -hmm. um to that and i actually i found myself using them surprisingly often really um in in one case it was like uh you know late night uh post post drinking you know trip to a mexican restaurant to get some really messy food yeah and i got some kind of like i forget it was like not like crazy nachos or something yeah and I literally just pulled out these nitrile gloves and put them on. Right. And just started going to town. With your hands, yeah. yeah. That and is ev- kind of nice. And everyone was like, fucking Ian. <laughs> that just, is a very you thing to do. Putting on gloves. That and is then a very Ian food. thing to do. <laughs> and but, I'm like, well. But it was probably very efficient. It worked. It worked great. And then I, you had no mess afterwards. I had no mess. I just took them off and I threw them away. And it doesn't, it doesn't, uh, the nitrile gloves don't like alter the taste. So you don't get any bitterness. It they're, doesn't they're, transfer they're, to the food at all. Yeah, nitro gloves are are very non-reactive. Maybe I'll do that next time I'm at a, I'm at like a boiling crab. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah, go for it. That'd man. be a good application for it. Boiling um, crab, you get you get your hands in there. 
Yeah. And you, and you, uh, you know, you don't have to worry about spicy residue that'll stay. Oh yeah. Like that you, under your nails that and you then come back to haunt you, you later. They take that you take with you sometimes to the bathroom. Yes. When you got to take a leak and then you find out too late that, uh, oh, man. some residuals. Yeah. I had, yeah, it's a bad transfer. I had a bad experience with some wings. They were really yeah. good. Yeah. I, 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 they made me cry <laughs> and I was just like, in the bathroom or when no, you were eating when I was them? eating them. Yeah. And I was just like, but they're so yummy. And I was just like, well, it's already, I'm already like so much in the spiciness zone that I'm crying. So I'm just going to finish <laughs> yeah, it. Yeah. Right. But I went immediately after I finished this, I went to the bathroom and I washed my hands twice. Yeah. And then I washed them another time when I got home. And then there was still, oh my gosh, a hidden, hidden spiciness incident. Jeez Louise. That I will not detail, but it was, <laughs> we can imagine. Uh, the, we can yeah. Use our imagination. Yeah, no, I I think I was handling some, either, it was some hot pepper. I had a, it's always a Mexican restaurant with me. It was like either some jalapenos or they might have been habaneros. And then I was just like at the restaurant without even washing my hands or even thinking about it. I was like, I got to go to the bathroom. And then just like came back and sat down. I, I forget who I was with, but it wasn't someone who I could just say like, oh, my dick's on fire. <laughs> so I just kind of had to eat it. And I was just like, <laughs> ooh, that's... That's a, a weird feeling. Were you like moving around a lot like this? In your yeah, I'm chair? Like, like, yeah, like, oh, you know, like, where, where like, do you want to go after this? Should we get comfortable? Should we get out of here? So <laughs> you're not looking straight into my eyes while I fidget. Can I, can I get an ice pack? Oh, man. So, uh, so okay. So that small was, tangent, small tangent. Yeah, uh, a bit of a digression there, but okay. Here's another one. Um, does, uh, does a straw have one hole or two? This one was breaking the internet, has broken the internet at some points. What's your take? A straw is just a ring. A straw is just a ring. It's just, it's, it's topographically, it's just a ring. So. Yeah, right. Um, it's kind of like a portal, right? You shoot two portals, but it's technically just one hole. A straw has, a straw has one hole. Right. Like, right. If you, take a straw and you remove the length Scrunch from it. it. Yeah, exactly. It's just, a, I mean, yeah, it's just a ring shape. So right, right. It's not like society has declared there's a bottom hole and a top hole. On right. And straw. Yeah, exactly. The only, the only time that uh, a straw has two holes is when they crack. Right. If you puncture it, if it gets punctured, you've never had a straw crack. I've had a straw crack. Yeah. Just uh, especially like the bendy straws, the ones that. Oh, yeah. I used to love those for some reason. Yeah. I used to have, like, when I was younger, I used to have, like, the swirly straws. Oh, the crazy straws. Crazy straws. That's yeah. what it was. Yeah. But, dude, I haven't had one of those in a while. I need to bring those back. Got to bring one of those back. Uh, yeah. So, what what was the internet saying? The straws have two holes? People were saying, yeah, some people were saying that it's like two because it's like, it's, I get what they're saying, where they're coming from. It's two sides to a straw. And it, and it looks kind of like if you just turn it one side and then turn it around, it's like there's one, there's the other. But you're right. It is just the same. It's the same hole. It's just, it's a tunnel, mm -hmm. you know. It's um, a cylinder. It's a cylinder. It's, it's like if you simplify it as much as possible, it's right. basically a donut. Yeah, right. Exactly. Um, but yeah. if, you, if you look at it as a cylinder, it is still a cylinder, which has right. one, one... So you have a laser beam shot a hole through the earth. It would yeah. technically create like a straw shape, but it's just one hole. There, yeah, it would just it going would, through. It would be. I would classify it as not a hole, but an aperture. Mm, yeah, that's a good term for it. I don't know if it's the right term, but it sounds good. It sounds fancy. Yeah, no one's gonna argue with that. <laughs> <You're> like, <laughs> this guy clearly knows more than me. All right, so now we can get into some of the uh, the more hard hitting questions. These yeah. are the actual bar debates. I won't go through all of them. There's a lot, but would you rather have, this is all from Reddit. So don't, don't hate me. This is all from Reddit and it's not safe for work. So mom, skip this part. I didn't write these. I did not come up with these. Just want to make that clear. Would you rather have penis sized nipples or nipple sized penis? Hmm. A nipple sized penis. 
I guess I would have to go with penis sized nipples. I think most guys would go that route. I think I would too. Because more you the can, merrier. Then you can triple helicopter. That is, ooh, yeah, you're right. You could actually finally disappoint multiple women at once. <laughs> What, like I haven't been able to? <laughs> <laughs> Usually I only get one, but you know. Hey, if, I, if I've if i got more equipment to uh, to let them down with, I, why not? Yeah, but... Uh, A nipple-sized okay. penis, that's just... Like, you. I would never I would never even try to use it. I'd be like, I can't. I can't face no, the that's, embarrassment. No, that's like an insurance write-off. Yeah, right. I would rather just have it... I'd just rather cut it off. If it was truly nipple-sized, it's, it's almost more embarrassing... It's less embarrassing to just not have a dick. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Just tell them some accident happened. Cause it's like, and they're like, oh, and they feel bad. As opposed to like, look at, look at what I'm working with here. Or you could just go be, be like, oh, well, there, I, was, I was in a cult and they, they cut off all my uh, Right. Yeah, exactly. Junk. And, then, yeah. and then you have a good reason why you're, you know, Varys from Game of Thrones. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Wait, what's the? Is it um? Is it Jewish people who do the foreskin cutting? Uh, it's a lot of people who do circumcision. Who is it? What religions do it? Are there certain religions that do it? Uh, Islam. Islam. Okay. Christians. Ju- Judaism and a good handful of Christianity. I always, I, I always get it confused, like who does it and who doesn't and do it. It's sometimes, such, so, sometimes a, it's religious and sometimes it's cultural. So right. Like culturally speaking, I can't speak to the religion side of it, but culturally speaking, yeah, quite a bit of Africa is circumcised. Okay, interesting, huh? Cool. Um, yeah, I don't know if I could deal with it. I could. I don't know if I could deal with. Does does not being because I'm circumcised does does foreskin make your dick look bigger? Mm. Does it add like a little bit because there's like a little bit of a, a shroud on it, like a kind of like a, a turtleneck? Uh, I don't. Th- think so okay i, I was think, wondering if I that think, would if that would help your nipple size penis if, oh, if, my, if, if my, it had a force my nipples would be all kinds of whack like yeah oh, you yeah. would not you i'd be like this all Ooh, the time. if you had nipple pe- if you had penis nip, penis size nipples would you yes. want them circumcised mm, nah nah let them hang out mm-hmm. get that elephant trunk exactly. what happened uh, my phone's gone it's Telefono. okay You'll never see it again. It's okay. All right. This is an interesting one. Oh, wait. That's kind of similar to the other one. <laughs> this is kind of funny. Would you want to do the first, if you're a straight guy, as we are, uh, would you Would you rather do the first 90% of a beach or the last 10% of a beach? Hmm. Last 10%. Yeah? Hmm. What if you had to take it? You, you had to. You had to take the load. There's no, there's no matrix dodging this. Mm, like to the dome or to the mouth? Um, it's a surprise. You're, you, <laughs> you don't know. Whatever. I'll, Dealer's I'll, choice. I'll take the last ten percent because that's where all the, that's where all the fun is. And I, I mean, all right, it's not maybe not the, the fun isn't necessarily for me, but it's like, sure, if I'm gonna be involved in something like that and somebody's having fun, like I'd rather be on the more fun part of it. I respect that approach. I respect that approach. Like you're you're making the most of it. You're making the most of a situation that maybe you don't you're not so hot about, but there's another person involved and you kind of want to you want to do right by them. Yeah, it's like a road trip. Like right. would you rather would you rather drive 90% of the way or be the driver for the last 10%? Well, it depends. If the driving at the last 10% you end up hitting a wall at the end. <laughs> <laughs> maybe not no the the driving for the last 10 percent is uh you have to go through a car wash <laughs> yeah but the windows are rolled down yeah <laughs> <laughs> you're in a convertible in the hoods off. <laughs> oh man yeah that's a tough one man that that is really tough and it's like are we talking about like a five minute beach a 10 minute beach you know what i mean like is that 90 percent nine minutes or is it you know is it me? You know, so it's like a, you're only working with 60 seconds, 120 tops. <laughs> it, it, it really depends. And it's also like, God, I don't know if I'd want to be able to like, I don't know if I'd, there's noises. The last 10% is like, there's like another sense that kicks in, mm-hmm. right? Because there's like the, the ah, whatever noise that, that is elicited from that I'd 10%. Like, there's that, no real noise. I like that. 
Although maybe it's like the awkward silence that really kills you in the 90%. You know what I mean? It's like the 10% when he starts going, rah, it's like, at least it's not awkward. <laughs> at least there's, at least it's not an awkward silence that, that might actually help. You might be onto something. You guys weigh in. This is um, this is science, people. What do you We're have doing to science say? Here. We need we need answers. All right, your mom and again didn't write these. <laughs> your your girlfriend and your mom switch bodies. You have to screw one of them to switch them back. Who do you screw? Hmm. There are hmm. some clever answers in the Reddit thread for this one, but I'll, I'll hear what you say first. Oof. I had all, all week to think about this. I still, I'm still struggling. Can it be both at the same time? <laughs> we got a madman over here. Uh, oh, and I'm assuming you know which is which. You know which is you know which is which. You know everyone knows what's happened. Everyone's aware of it. If you screw both of them by not screwing them. Then you don't have to screw them. Wait, no, they just, they just get stuck switched. <laughs> but then, who do you like? Who do you date? Are you gonna date your mom in your girlfriend's body, or are you gonna date your girlfriend's body with your mom's brain? No, I'll just take my girlfriend with my mom's brain in it, and she can be my mom, and then I break up with my girlfriend. Who's your mom? Who's really your mom? Because my mom just got a, a age reduction. Yeah, she did. Like for our moms, all moms would be stoked. All moms would be like, "Oh my god, I just got I gained twenty five years." Right. <laughs> this is awesome. Um, one what one uh, answer I thought was really clever was get. I think it was get your girlfriend's permission to knock her unconscious, so that it's like really like your mom is not aware of what's going on and then do the deed and then they switch back. Hmm. So it's, it's still your girlfriend's body, but your, your, your mom isn't there. She's like lights are like no one's home. She's unconscious, but I don't know that that also seems kind of like a, a cop out. Yeah. It's a, uh, it's a very questionable situation to begin with. So definitely that's what makes it, that's what makes it hard. Hmm. Very tough. Doesn't make it hard for me. No, yeah, that definitely not. <laughs> That'd be something very wrong with that. That I guess that's the point. But uh, hmm, that is that is a tough one. I feel like uh, um, you do your mom, but doggy. <laughs> do it, doggy. If they have to be, if 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 the you can't be unconscious, if no one can be unconscious, everyone's got to be lucid, doggy style with the mom. I guess that's just and taper mouth shut just practical practically speaking that seems that seems like the past path of least resistance in terms of mental resistance in yourself yeah we, we need you guys to weigh on weigh in on this as well these are important questions and i also just want to feel less alone with my answers <laughs> somebody else please back him up back me up dude <laughs> back me up all right let's do one more um, would you rather have penises for fingers or vaginas for ears? These are all very genitalia related questions. They are very, very. All right. This is a better one. This is a better one. Cause that was similar to the first one. Would you rather receive an alert every time your parents have sex or they get an alert when you do? Hmm. I thought that was an interesting question. Again, with parents and sex, a lot of hot debate topics. I think uh, I think this might be tied into the whole like I, 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 there's apparently there's like you can find some graph that shows uh, how the, drunk the, you get versus when you talk about screwing your parents. No, there's there's <laughs> like a porn porn search trends. Yeah, like, right. Like the term like terms. Uh, popularity over time stepdad and then yeah Step stuff mom. like that and yeah. incest has just like <laughs> yeah. skyrocketed that lately. is true that is true america it's crazy you should be ashamed of yourself it is just insane everything's just step bro step sis St yeah stuck step step sis what's okay what was the question again it was if which one oh. would you rather choose you you um, get an alert every time your parents have sex or they get an alert every time you do i think i, I would i think i would take the alert you take the alert. Oof. I just feel like 
Good job, guys. Keep you know. Ugh, no. I'd rather. Keep I'd it rather, going. I'd rather they get the alert and just tell them to infinitely just block my number. I mean, that's that you can't do that. I would say oh, no. That's that's the selfless. That's the selfless answer. The one that you picked. Well, because I, I would take it as like, hey, this is this is. My parents know. are still in love. They're, yeah, exactly. It's exactly. healthy. Yeah, you have the right approach. You you have you you keep such a your head on a swivel or like not a head on a swivel, but you have such a good perspective of things. I would just be like, Ugh! like it would just ruin the next ten minutes of my life. <laughs> Whatever I was doing would be ruined in that moment. Well, I guess I have less hangups about it. it just it, for me, it's just like well. Like every, how, how how do you get here? People have sex. Yeah, right, 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 right. No, you I know? get that. Like, yeah. and that's just. It's just that's, the visual. It's just the visual taking place in your mind for that second. I guess I don't, I don't have a visual, you know, response to that scenario. I'm just like, it's a, it's more of a, it's more of a intellectual, like, yeah, like, oh, that happened. And then an empathetic, like, oh, I'm glad that happened. What if it was like, like five times a day? <laughs> just be like, that's the other thing too. Is damn. like just it's also just like knowing their habits, like just knowing their habits for forever, and also like it. You you have to also consider that it might bum you out if it if you never get any alerts. Hmm. Yeah, that's true. Like that's a thing too. Like you you you'll know how much they're fucking or how little they're fucking. I mean. So then, so then here's the thing is if I'm guessing, I'm guessing you, you, yeah, you said you chose, they you'll, get an alert. you'll get, they'll get alerts. They'll get an alert when I do it. Yeah. Well, then either way that could lead to disappointment. <laughs> like they're disappointed in me. Yeah. Just like, why, why are you such a slut? Right. Or why, why can't you, why can't you, <laughs> why can't you get me? Your dad just starts giving you shit. That yeah. could be terrible. Every time you get together yeah. with your dad, he's just like, "So you go on any dates lately? I uh, I haven't seen any uh, notifications. Kind of slow on the market these days, huh, son? Yeah, little uh, you, know, you should get a haircut. You know, maybe, maybe clean this up a little bit. Yeah, your uh, your your mom's coworker has a daughter your age. Oh maybe God, yeah, that would be the that would be your mom would be the mom would be the what the matchmaker. Yeah, she, trying to like set you up. Like my my the lady who does my hair has a has yeah. a daughter your age right yeah, <laughs> and her mom gets alerts from her all the time so <laughs> she's, she's a great match for you. So uh, we'll save the other maybe we maybe we will maybe we won't save the other ones for next time. But we're gonna do we're gonna call it for now. We'll see you next week, later guys. Bye.